Welcome back. I've got a fascinating experiment to show you today and one that changed the whole course of physics and it's called the photoelectric effect. Back in the 1880s, Heinrich Hertz, a pioneer of radio waves, noticed that when he shone ultraviolet light on high voltage electrodes, sparks formed and they formed more easily when the ultraviolet light shined on them. But when he did it with really bright sunlight, nothing happened. It only seemed to work. It only seemed to throw sparks easily. The electrons only flowed off the metals easily when ultraviolet light was shone on them and not when normal light was shone on them. Now, that was something that there was no explanation for in physics at that time. So, to explain this rather unusual effect that's become known as the photoelectric effect, I need to show you a piece of apparatus that goes back a very long way. And it's this device, the gold leaf electroscope. It looks a little bit complicated, but in fact it's really simple. It consists of a metal pole, and attached to the metal pole at the bottom is a very, very thin piece of gold foil. It's gold because it's a good conductor of electricity and also because it can be made very, very thin indeed by hammering it and rolling it flat. So it's very, very lightweight. So it's surrounded by a wooden box, but we don't need to worry about that. The main thing is we've just got this insulated metal bar with a gold leaf hanging off it. And if I put some charge onto the metal, what we're doing is putting electrons onto the top plate of this. So the whole of the metal bar, the vertical bar, becomes negative. So does the gold leaf. So the negative electrons in the gold leaf and in the vertical metal bar repel each other. And the height of the leaf shows you the charge that forms on the electroscope. The higher the leaf, the greater the voltage, the greater the charge. And if I discharge it, the leaf falls down because both the leaf and the metal bar are neutral. So what we're going to do is we're going to charge this up negatively and cover the whole of the metal bar and the gold leaf with electrons and then we're going to shine some light onto the top of the metal. I've put a piece of zinc metal on top of the gold leaf electroscope and I'll explain why I've done that in a minute. So let's cover the electroscope's metal with electrons. So I've got the negative terminal of a high voltage power supply. I'm going to touch it onto the top of the electroscope and then take it away. And now the electroscope is covered in electrons. It's highly charged negatively. I've got a fairly low brightness, low intensity ultraviolet light here. And what I'm going to do is similar to what Heinrich Hertz did. I'm just going to shine the ultraviolet light onto the top of the electroscope and onto the metal. And you'll notice what happens to the gold leaf. It's lost its charge. Remember, I never touched the top of the electroscope. I never earthed the charge through my body. I just had ultraviolet light falling onto the piece of zinc and for some mysterious reason it discharged. The electrons disappeared. So let's repeat the experiment with a really bright laser. I've got a green semiconductor laser here and it's extremely intense. It's a very powerful light source or at least a lot of energy is condensed down onto a small cross-sectional area. So let's charge up the electroscope again cover it with electrons. You'll see the leaf repel because it's negative and so is the vertical bar. And let's shine the green light on top of this zinc metal. You can do this all day and nothing happens. No matter how bright the green light is, the electroscope never discharges. The electrons just remain on it. But if we take our fairly dim and low intensity ultraviolet source and hold it over the zinc for a while, you'll notice that slowly but surely the electroscope discharges and the electrons disappear from the surface of the metal. And this is the photoelectric effect and it's going to take some explaining. So what you're seeing here was known as the ultraviolet catastrophe. Surely really bright green light contains a lot of energy and would be capable of smashing electrons off the metal. 
and dim ultraviolet light, not very bright, must contain very little energy and couldn't do any damage to the metal, couldn't knock electrons out. But of course what we see is the complete opposite. So the ultraviolet catastrophe is a really good name for this. And Max Planck came along and he was one of the early quantum physicists and he had something to say about what light really looked like. What Max Planck suggested was that all light rays contain individual packets of energy. You might know these as photons now. And that green light contains lots of little packets of energy, but each individual bit of green light doesn't contain much energy at all. Whereas the individual packets of energy of ultraviolet light, each one contains an awful lot of energy. I describe this to my students as a coconut shy. And green light is like throwing ping pong balls at the coconut shy. You can throw as many as you like, but they just bounce off. They don't have an effect. Whereas ultraviolet light is like having a machine gun and firing very high kinetic energy bullets. In the case of ultraviolet light, each photon contains much more energy than is contained in a single green photon. Now, green light might look brighter. That's because there's a lot of individual photons, but each one hasn't got enough energy to knock an electron off the surface of the metal on the gold leaf electroscope. You might have noticed me putting the zinc on the top of the electroscope, and this is for a good reason. That before we did the experiment, I cleaned the top of the zinc because the electrons that sit in the zinc can leave the surface, but if the surface is dirty, they struggle to get out and lose energy on the way out. So when a green photon goes in, it doesn't have enough energy to cause an electron to leave the metal structure and escape from the surface. But an ultraviolet lamp has photons with much, much more energy in them. They're a much higher frequency. And you might remember that the energy of a photon is Planck's constant times by its frequency in Hertz. The high energy photons in ultraviolet light have enough energy to knock electrons out of the zinc. And if there isn't too much dirt or oxide on the surface, the electrons will come out with kinetic energy and A-level students should know that the kinetic energy of the ejected photoelectrons is equal to the energy of the photon that knocked them out, but it's a little bit smaller because there's energy lost getting out of the surface of the zinc, called the work function. And by cleaning the zinc, we've reduced the work function to as low a value as we can. So, what you see here is a one-to-one -one process. It was explained by Einstein, and he got a Nobel Prize for it, that one photon comes in, and if it has enough energy, that one photon will eject one electron. That's what makes it a quantum process. Two photons eject two electrons. And that is the photoelectric effect. So, I hope you enjoyed that experiment, one that changed the whole course of physics in the early 1900s, and resulted in Einstein getting a Nobel Prize for explaining it. I'll be doing some more experiments, so I look forward to seeing you again next time.